Hello, and welcome to this edition of EMS Now Up Close. I am Eric Miskell with EMS Now, and today it's my pleasure to be speaking with Ziv Efrat. Ziv is the CEO of Cyborg. Cyborg, as you will learn, is a very exciting newer company that's doing some excellent work uh, in the supply chain. I'll let Ziv explain a little bit more of that as we move forward. But to begin, Ziv, first of all, welcome. It's an honor to, to have a chance to speak to you. Um, why don't you introduce yourself and your background in the industry so people know where you come from? So thank you very much, Eric, for, in, for inviting me to this interview. Um, Cyborg was actually born from a real situation. And the real situation came out uh, because our founder actually went through a process which was not very nice of almost scrapping a billion dollar project. And at that, somewhere at that time, I met Eyal Weiss, who is our founder. Mm -hmm. And uh, my background came from electronics and before that IoT systems, before that ERP, PDM, PLM systems, and even mechanical engineering very, very in the past. So quite a, a long journey so far. And I would like to continue with Eyal's story because when happened to Eyal is that he was actually in a situation where a very big project, which took about 12 years to perform, was actually almost canceled. And it was canceled almost because of a capacitor, which is three, five cents, two cents, whoever, mm. that was actually not performing correct because it was four dated. And at that point, Eyal decided what is going to be his next move. And some point in time, Eyal met me. And here we are with Cyborg that grew up in the last year from about six people to 30 and uh, already in production. Yes. Yeah, I was looking at that. And uh, just the numbers, uh, you keep a running tally on your website. So I, and it's an impressive number, over 3 billion uh, components inspected and over, over 6 million boards, PCBA boards inspected. So, I mean, it's a very impressive number. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about Cyborg's visual AI analytics solution. Explain what it is that you, you do. The concept, I, first I would send the concept. The concept is that we are working on a zero trust environment which means we want to check every component, regardless where it came from, regardless if it came from a, 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 a franchise source, regardless if it came from a broker source, whoever source, we are actually checking if this component is okay. Now, what is okay? Okay could be if it's authentic, first of all. Yes. If it's authentic, let's also check if the quality is good. And actually, as well, the quality, not just of the production, which you can find cracks, et cetera, but also the quality of maintaining this product. We don't want to find corrosion, but we do find corrosion. Yeah. So once you are actually looking at each component, you are able to put data into the process. Normally today, in all the AI systems, which you will see on the floor, on the SMT process, there are AI systems which are based on the data that the machines are providing. Mm -hmm. Okay, the SMT machines, the pick and place machines are providing a lot of data, and this is now better analyzed by AI systems. Here, what we do is we are bringing in data. We are collecting images of components all around the world. And once it comes to you, we actually run an AI model that checks if your component is okay etc. and okay or not okay, but the data is coming in. So we are adding more data and more analysis into the S&P process. Mm -hmm. And that's the beauty about it because it's not just taking what you have and analyzing it, taking what you have, analyze it and add another layer, it's the component layer. Mm -hmm. and, and to be clear too, this isn't a piece of hardware. You're utilizing the existing visual uh, uh, capabilities of the machines, and you're yes. doing it both top and bottom side of the components. Correct. Thank you for asking and saying and mentioning it. 
We are purely software. Yeah. The machines today take all the images. It's in their processes. We don't need to add any camera, not in the pick and place machine and not in the AOI machine. We are analyzing the images that are produced during the process. Mm -hmm. We are not changing the throughput because those images are fast enough and small enough, and we are able to analyze them fast enough to continue without changing the throughput. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this isn't just, and explain how this works, because I there's actually three uh, what, what's our, uh, positions in an SMT line where this process occurs and, and serves kind of a different function. Can yeah. you, could you speak to that, please? Yeah. We have um, three products, practically. The first one is actually even not in the SMT production. It's actually in the warehouse. Okay. It's a reel-to-reel a -reel machine that helps us to check reels before we bring them into the re to their production. And this is mainly used for reels that you know they're coming from, let's say, unsafe source. Okay. So these are checked one by one, and we're taking an image of every component from the top. Mm -hmm. We are checking for authenticity and if for quality that you can see on the top. And this actually eliminates your situation of counterfeit brought into the SMT process. Mm -hmm. Then. The second stage is the SMT machine or the pick and place machine, sorry, the SMT line, the pick and place machine. Pick and place machine is taking an image anyway from the bottom of each component. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody normally see this bottom of, the, of each component and this image is normally deleted after a few milliseconds. We are taking, we are using this image and we are connected to, for example, ASM or Fuji with a special API that gives us this image without changing the throughput of the head. And we are analyzing one by one by our AI model. Cool. In, in, a, in an easy way to say is comparing the fingerprint of each component to the database that we have. Okay. And the, th the third stage is actually in the AI machine. We look at each component from the top because the AI machine looks at the board, takes images of all the components. We are looking at the ICs and we are checking the marking and if they translate it correct and checking it against documentation. So that checks if the traceability of the of the of the this board is correct. Surprisingly enough, it's not always correct. It's supposed to be that what is written on the item is written on the documentation, but it's not always. And if you are running a manufacturing process of millions of boards yeah. and you want to have 100% traceability, today it's not 100%. Mm -hmm. What we're doing is we're checking each EIC on the top, and then we are going to alert you if this is not according to what you expect to be. This way you have A, you check each component for authenticity, for quality, for corrosion, and you check that the traceability system is 100% is proof. This allows us to give you what we call surgical traceability. Okay. And it, it, it impresses me that the more you do, the smarter the system becomes, right? The more components you do, the more boards, you're building this, this database, the AI system is, right. and recognizing more, having seen more problems too, right? The whole concept of AI generally, not just us, is, actually manage huge databases yeah. and able to take out logic and sense out of a huge database. Mm -hmm. Now, we, in the beginning, we had an issue of building this database because nobody is really taking an image of the bottom of, of items as much as I remember before. Nobody is using that. Right. So it was a process of learning. Uh, we have a lot of um, help and, and guidance from Flex in Israel and and abroad. And that's the way we managed to build up this huge database. Once the database is, is, is big enough, then it's much easier to start putting in information about new components because components are, uh, they have the same, the, same, the same way, the same size, the same measurement 
from the same um, manufacturer. So the package cases, the number of package cases in the industry is not hundreds of millions, it's thousands. Yeah. And that's the trick. You don't need to know everyone to know if, you, if someone is the right person. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. So, so I mean, generally speaking, the three, the three parts where it happens, you inspect, you qualify, and you track, simply stated. So what results then can the EMS and the OEMs expect to achieve? First of all, the OEM is our client. He gets full visibility in his product. He knows exactly what's installed on his board. He knows exactly what are the problems and he has surgical traceability. Mm -hmm. So once there is a fault, he can get to the right board and not to the whole lot or the whole batch or whatever, how big it is. And he can pinpoint to the hundred boards that are faulty or the 10 boards that are faulty instead of returning too many boards from the field. That's first thing. Second, he gets um, actually very easy way to find those disturbability data. So the access to find a board, all the, all the components, and from the component find all the brother components which are faulty, it's easy, it's a clicks on a button because it's a SaaS system. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't need to install any system, anything, it's all in the cloud. The EMS, from the other hand, gets a lot of information on the production. We check that the lighting, the exposure of, of the image from the bottom is correct, for example. Now, if it's not correct, the machine doesn't put the item correctly. So we give them alerts up, up front on that. We give them alerts up front on crack or low quality, let's call it low quality components that you want to take out. You don't want to continue the process so you can do a rework fast, faster than, than before. We actually alert on corrosion. So if you have a corrosive, corrosive reel, then or part of it, you can immediately stop the reel and not continue in manufacturing. Because yeah, you know you are going to make bad products, so why continue? Yeah. So it's upfront. So if we're taking all those measurements, we're actually giving um, the the EMS the ability to learn in process from the components he's placing. By learning what he is looking, he is actually using. He can make decisions during production and not only after. Mm -hmm. So that's just moving the decision making of a bad component, etc., to the to the actually to the assembly line, to the pick and place line, and also make better decisions on quality of components because we see all the components of a car, of of a, of a provider. And we can compare between providers. So the same, in the same ABL, we have, let's say, two types of capacitors. We see both companies. We see the tolerances of each of those companies. And if it's one of them is better than the other or more accurate than the other, the procurement guys in the EMS side know how to buy better. So we change the way of procurement. Instead of... Today, procurement, especially in the supply chain crisis, you buy what you can. Price and allocation. That's what you deal with. Yeah. What about quality? And how the quality will affect your later on production? This was not a, there was no data on quality. Now you have data on quality. I can tell you what is the quality of the components for coming from. Samsung, Murata, Rolsin, etc., and compare between them. This information is available both for the OEM and the EMS. I see. So, you know, I think a lot of people had associated the cyborg solution with more with counterfeits initially. So, you know, detecting right. those and 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 certainly it's good to hear kind of all the other issues that it's able to to identify and, and help mitigate. But tell me, in, in regards to uh, counterfeit electronic components, how does Cyborg, and I don't want to use the word prevent because you can't prevent go back to the true, original is, source. How do you mitigate that? Prevent is, a, is an absolute word. I prefer, I prefer mitigate. Yeah. We actually, we have, a, call it a fingerprint of every uh, 
case, uh, every component that is manufactured. Okay. Assuming we have it all, it's not correct. We have big parts of it. We are able to run an AI model on the image of the component from the bottom and say, yes, this was manufactured in an authorized location of Texas Instrument. Now, if it's not manufactured in an authorized location, packaged in an authorized location of Texas Instrument, I don't want to touch it anymore. Mm -hmm. So the, the trick is in the packaging. Texas Instrument will never package their, their um, chips, their, their dyes, in a wrong location. Not going to happen. Yeah. If the package itself, the, let's call it the plastic, is not as the same dye that is authorized by Texas, we will immediately say, stop. Okay. This is coming from a wrong location. Sometimes we will know which location, if it's mixed, with somewhere we somewhere we know, or some of them we say just we don't know where it comes from, but it's not Texas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So stop what you're doing, and uh, like you said, you replace this for... reel, take another reel. The same thing we are, we're doing in the incoming warehouse from the reel to reel system. Gotcha. From the top. Yeah. Now, you've added, and I was excited, I went by your booth at Electronica, and I saw, I'm going to hold it up, I don't know if they see it, you know what, I, yeah, you have the same, don't you? I don't know if this shows, but you, tell us about this, you're calling it traceability as a service, and it's, uh, and Eyal, actually, I spoke to, and he gave me one of the chips, so uh, explain what that is, and what this, what benefit this brings to the market. Yeah, this is kind of things that happens when you are swimming or going to the mate to, to shower and think about things and suddenly uh, <laughs> you have an idea. Yep. We are looking at each component from the bottom and from the top, correct? Mm -hmm. That's the process. We're looking at it from the bottom on the AOI, on the SMT, on the pick and place machine. We are looking from the top on the AOI machine. Yep. So why not take a piece of plastic which has a QR on it, has the QR on both sides. Mm -hmm and actually put it in a reel. It looks like a chip. It feels like a chip. It's not a chip. Right. It's actually a piece of plastic, has no electronic value, but has a number on the QR. Now, this, you put it in the machine, the same as you're putting any, any capacitor, and it's placed anywhere on the board. Okay? Now, when this board is going through the, through the first pick and place machine, this is placed. Now, at the, this point, we have a number for this board. We label the board. This replaces the labeling system. It replaces the, the laser engraving, because now we have a number. Now, we are the only ones that see, have seen it from the bottom and from the top. So you cannot actually replace it or play with it. Because in our database, this board has this chip on it, and we have the image from the bottom and the top. So if you copy the image from the top, it won't help you. I see. Now it goes along in, this, in, in the process. We attach to that all the, all the information we were talking before. So is it, is the, are all the components on the board authentic? Are they OK? What is the quality? What is the statistic of the quality? Any corrosion, yes or no? And it holds it on. So now you can actually have a repository, what we call a board certificate, which is automatically labeled. You don't need to install any traceability systems, which are very expensive, by the way. You buy actually this chip from us, which will cost a few cents. And it's a regular process of SMT. Mm -hmm. You don't need to think about another process. And you have traceable boards. Now, most of the industry do not have traceable boards, and they are doing labeling, which is managing big lists of bulks of Excel sheets with labels and numbers. Thank you, no anymore. Because what happened is, once it goes through our system, the label, let's call it the, the, the chip with the number, calls on all the information about the board, and you don't need to any other ERP system or whatever to, to manage it. Now, 
Now, in the future, we will build an API that anyone that is using our system can actually upload all this information to his ERP system. Mm. So nobody touched it, no handwork, no um, people involved in the process, and you have full traceability without any hardware that you need to install on the line. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, the nice thing about it. And it's easy. And we already see, uh, yeah. already we're testing it already in, in some uh, lines to see how people react to that. And it's very, very good. Because it's Thank simple. You. Yeah, no, thanks for adding that last part because that was going to be my question. How are people reacting to it? So it is programmed or encoded by the, uh, the cyborg system. Uh, at what at which juncture then? At the last piece? No, we are actually going to sell reels with those chips on them. Okay. A reel that instead of having capacitors or whatever mm -hmm. uh, electronic components, it will have this as a component. Right. Now you can place it anywhere on your board because it has no electronic value. It's, it's right. just two pads. That's all. Uh, so it will. You know, you you are putting on the SM on the picket place machine. You're putting. 20 reels, so this will be the 21. The 21. Yeah. That makes complete sense, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, I thought this was exciting. I think it's an interesting new, <clears throat> and you know, I like the way you said that, the things you think about while swimming or taking a shower, right? The water kind of gives some clarity sometimes, and you have these aha moments, and uh, uh, and you're right. I mean, every most boards have labels on them, so it's not like it's taking up space that's, you know, because... <clears throat> foot, you know, real estate on a board is, a, is at a high premium anyway. Right. So it's not like you're 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 yeah. compounding a problem. And, no. and, and the labeling, you need a labeling machine, or you do it manually. You need real estate. The label needs to be a special material because sometimes it goes through the reflow, so it doesn't need to. You know, it's going through temperatures, etc. We are using here simple PCB FR material that is standard, and there is no special materials, there's no special printing, and there is no uh, human handling. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And so this has, when did, was this introduced then? I know you say that you're testing it now, is it? Just, just uh, two weeks before Acronic. Okay, well, so <laughs> it's available now, so people who are yeah. interested can contact yeah. Cyborg and learn more about it. I thought it was brilliant. We're both holding the same card, and I know that Al handed me this when I was at, yeah. at the booth. Um, and uh, it really brings it to life. So it's a good example of it. So um, see if we've come to the end of the interview, but I must say this has been very informative and very interesting. And I, you know, I was looking forward to this because I wanted to learn more about your solution, even having been to the booth and, and spoken to you on a couple of occasions. This really kind of uh, makes it a little more real for me and I'm sure for the audience as well. So um so thank you for your time today, sir. I really appreciate that. Uh, and I look forward to kind of continuing to, to see what Cyborg does and hopefully get to catch up with you again next year and hear even more exciting news. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming to the board. Uh, thank you for the interview and I hope that you will have news even before next year. So thank oh, you very good. much. Well, I will stay, everybody will stay tuned. That was a good teaser. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay.